Hi guys, welcome back to another painting tutorial. Pete the Wargamer here, and today we're going to be painting some of the tiny planes from Aeronautica Imperialis. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint the Thunderbolt fighter, and the first thing we need to do is to prime it. Priming ensures that you have a good surface to apply your paint to, and allows the later layers of paint to properly stick to your model. For this particular miniature, I've elected to save a little time on the painting process by priming with my starting colour. I've opted to use the Mechanica Standard Grey Aerosol here, but if you don't have access to this paint, you could instead use a different colour primer and paint over with a brush on Mechanica Standard Grey instead. Now that you have your miniature primed, we can properly start the painting. The first step will involve applying something called colour modulation, which we have an example of here. This is a technique uh, which is something I've borrowed from my experiences with military modelling, and it's a great way of creating sharper looking edges through the use of highlights and shadows. It also makes otherwise flat panels a little more interesting to look at. Creating this effect involves creating gradients, and the best way to achieve this is through the use of glazing. To create a glaze, you will need to take a paint and mix it with a medium, which is a pigmentless paint that allows you to create a translucent paint without affecting the viscosity too much. I'm using some Lamium Medium here and I'm mixing it with some Administratum Grey. The ratio I like to use is about two parts medium to one part paint. This basically means two brush loads of medium to every brush load of paint you use. I find that using too much medium is better than not using enough as you can always apply more later on. Now that we have our mixture, we can start to apply it to our Thunderbolt. Now I'll be breaking up the whole model into individual panels and painting each of those panels individually. For each of these panels, we will be starting the gradients on the side of the panel closest to the front of the plane. Apply your first layer and drag your brush from the front to the back of the panel using a side to side motion. As the brush moves back, the brush has less and less paint which creates the gradient we're looking to achieve. After this first layer is dried, you can apply a second layer over the top, but this time don't apply as much paint as before. By using less paint, we'll create a much lighter area at the front of the panel, which will get progressively darker as it moves backwards. Now some areas of the model may be too small to apply gradients to. These are things like small hatches or hinges, and for this we'll be painting them entirely with Administratum Grey that has only been thinned with just a little water. Similarly, you can further boost this brightness by applying a thin highlight to the forwardmost edge of the panel gradients, using some more Administratum Grey thinned with just a little water. Once this technique has been applied across all of your panels, you should have something similar to this. The result is a grayscale miniature that we can add colour to over the next few steps by making further use of glazing, but in a slightly different way. Now as I want to create some markings on my Thunderbolt, I'm using some masking tape to cover over the areas where I want to maintain the grayscale for the time being. This thin masking tape is perfect for our needs and a single strip creates a simple line marking on the wing. You can find a tape like this linked in the description below. For our next glaze, instead of creating one using a regular paint mixed with Lamium Medium, we are instead going to be reaching for the contrast paint, Space Wolves Grey. Contrast paints are already translucent in their nature, which makes them perfect for glazing. However, straight out of the parts, they are far too heavily pigmented. To fix this, however, we can mix in some contrast medium. This time, we need to use a lot more medium to the paint, and so I'll be opting for a 5 to 1 ratio of medium to paint, because it's much better to use too much medium than not enough. That's going to be my catchphrase in this video. So remember, more medium is better because you can always add more, you can't take it away if you've added too much. Armed with your mixture, you can start to apply this paint across the plane's hull. The contrast paint will show the gradients beneath it, but will give them a slightly bluish hue. Try to keep your application here as even as possible, and avoid pooling where you can. Also, take care when painting near the masking tape, as you don't want the mixture to seep beneath the tape. Think of the tape as more of a guideline where, of where to paint, rather than an impermeable mask. This will ensure you keep the markings crisp and well defined. After applying your first thin layer and allowing it to dry thoroughly, you can then apply another layer over the top to increase the intensity of the blue. If you want a greyer blue, then this won't be needed, but if you quite like the blue, just apply as many layers as you see fit. After allowing the Space Wolves grey to dry, you can then remove your tape, revealing the original grey areas beneath them. 
Now that we have our guide, we can start to apply our markings. For this step, I'm once again turning to contrast paints, Iandan Yellow in particular, and we'll simply be applying the paint in the exact same way as we applied the last contrast paint. If you're feeling confident, you don't need to use a tape again, but feel free to add a little more to protect your blue-gray areas. Now the keen-eyed among you may have noticed that I did make a mistake here with the positioning of my tape, meaning that the lines are slightly mismatched, but this doesn't matter too much as we can balance out the markings during this step. So if you do the same thing, don't worry as it is completely fixable. For the glass of the cockpit, I wanted a colour that would really stand out against the bluish grey, so I chose the Blood Angels Red. Again, this is another contrast paint that can be applied in the exact same way as before. However, the area we're painting here is much smaller and more fiddly than the areas we've painted previously, so use a small brush and remember to take your time. At this stage in the painting process, we have all the base colors, and all that remains is to add a little shading and weathering to the miniature. The first of these steps involves picking out the distinct recesses of the model in a process known as panel lining or pin washing. Whereas a regular wash involves covering a large area with a wash to create shading, panel lining achieves a similar result, but with a more focused application of your shadows. This way, we also avoid the washes pooling over the flat surfaces or darkening them down too much. This method of washing does take a little bit longer, but does give you a more controlled approach to washing. So for this step, I'll be using Black Templar and a thin brush that will fit in between those small panels. Only use a little of the contrast paint on the tip of the brush and carefully drag it along the length of the panel recesses. If you do overspill, quickly wet your finger and just wipe it away. Usually, if you keep the mixture thin enough, this shouldn't matter too much. But this technique will darken down those recesses, creating the appearance of a shadow, and therefore adding depth to the miniature's surface. Using the same contrast paint, I will also be applying it to the areas of the model that weren't covered by the earlier glazing, which include the engines and the weaponry. I want to give these areas a dark metallic appearance, but their Mechanica standard grey base coat simply isn't dark enough for this. Therefore, by applying a thin mixture of Black Templar, we can darken them down slightly, whilst also giving their recesses a little shading, essentially treating the contrast paint as a more heavily pigmented wash. Our Thunderbolt is for the most part complete, but in its current state, it's more factory fresh than battle hardened. To remedy this, we'll be using some Seigel Brown to apply some simple weathering effects to the plane. So, take your Seigel Brown and thin it down like we did before, but this time, use a ratio of two parts medium to one part paint. Then, starting your brush at the front of the wings, pull the brush back across the wing, moving towards the rear of the plane. By only using a little paint on your brush, you should be able to create some brown streaks across the wing that become narrower as they move backwards. The result is a plane that has flown through flak and other debris, leaving burn marks across the surface. Now this technique doesn't need to be isolated to just the wings either. You can also use the same method across the rest of the hull and even use the mixture to create a build-up around the engine's exhaust and weaponries as well. Finally, we want to create some metallic sheen on some of the edges of the plane, where paintwork will become damaged, revealing the metal beneath it. However, instead of using a metallic paint, I'll instead be reaching for the trusty graphite. Graphite is great for creating a metallic shine, and it's cheap to get hold of, really easy to use, and creates more of a shine rather than the glitter result that many metallics have. Using a pencil or graphite stick, the softer the graphite the better, lightly drag it across some of the hard edges of the plane where you would imagine damage would occur. The edges towards the front of the plane are good spots for this. You can also use this graphite over the metallic areas like the engines and weaponry that we washed with Black Templar. This will finish off that dark metal appearance we started in the earlier step. And here we have the finished Thunderbolt fighter attached to its flight stand and ready for some games of Aeronautica Imperialis. Overall, I'm quite happy with how the scheme turned out. I've been meaning to make use of contrast paints and slightly more involved paint schemes, and I think they worked well as glazers to add colour to the modulation that I applied over the panels. Additionally, you could quite easily swap out the Space Wolves Grey and Iandan Yellow that I used in this video for other contrast paints of your preferred colour. The steps will be the exact same, and you'll be left with a miniature in your own scheme. 
Let me know what you thought of the scheme and the techniques used in this video. And if you're looking to support me in making these videos, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which will allow you to donate to me from as little as a dollar a month. That just helps to pay for the miniatures, paints and equipment that I use to produce these videos. And for anyone looking to chat about all things wargaming with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below as well. So, the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.